Bum, bum, bum. Starting into chapter two, the country village of Dropstone. Look at that cow with that hat. Also, Luke, you shouldn't slouch like that. That's bad for your back. The train's looking pretty trash, so we're stopping here for repairs. We got at least three hours till we'll be ready to roll, so why don't you catch on the local sites? A capital idea. Besides, who knows what information we might stumble upon in the village. Da -da -da. The Professor, Luke, and Flora decide to take in the sights around Dropstone. Well, I want to talk to Sammy again. I'm telling you, man, this sleepy little farm place is like the chillest place on Earth. My uncle, I mean the boss, is wandering around the village and so is that inspector dude. The village is celebrating its 50th anniversary right now, so I bet there's tons of stuff to do. If I weren't stuck working, I'd definitely go check it out myself. So the village was founded only 50 years ago. That's quite young for a settlement in these parts. And it's so peaceful here that I really can't f believe we'll find any clues about the Elysian box. Oh, I wouldn't be so sure about that, Luke. Remember, one of the first rules of puzzle solving is that the answer is often in the unlikeliest of places. I mean, this is true. You're not... He ain't wrong. Right as always, Professor. I'll be sure to keep my eyes peeled for clues. Alright, well, first things first. Keep your eyes peeled for some... Oops. That's not a hint coin. Hmm. Look at this poster, Professor. Yes, it's quite lovely, Luke. Oh, but there's something quite odd about this picture. Hmm? What do you mean, Professor? <gasps> a dramatic farewell. Train stations are an especially good place for dramatic farewells, aren't they? Below is a painting of a man and a woman bidding each other a tearful goodbye. Somewhere within this painting, however, is a single unrealistic detail. Find and circle that detail. Okay, this one was kind of weird. Um, but because apparently, I don't know, Zunder, if you're still here, you'd, you maybe you'd understand this better than me because I am not around trains that much. Um, I actually had to look it up the first time because I was like, literally everything looks okay to me. Um, but the problem is this. And the more I look at it, the more I'm like, okay, because the way it shows the window, it's only in one piece. So if you shoved the window straight up, there's no possible way it would just, it could do that. Um, because I think most trains, apparently their windows go down just because obviously there's space down there or they just don't open. She's come to help a puzzle. Hi, Seer. How are you doing today? Here it goes. Yeah. Piece of cake. Aw. You need some good food. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta take your rest. Well spotted. Were the man in the painting to open the window as shown above, the frame would go through the roof of the train. These days, most trains have windows that only open partially. Of course, thanks to modern air conditioning, a good number of trains have been fitted with windows that don't open at all. 6 p.m. found out your son decided not to- What? Why? Why did he- Why did he decide not to eat? I knew there was something strange about that picture. You got a two-sided part. Use it to rebuild the camera and the professor's trunk. Children. Why do children do things? Why children? Why? Okay. Um, let's see. His kids get distracted by playing. You don't want to put... Oh, he just wants it set in front of him. Oh, no. That's not good. I mean, I understand the... Getting distracted, but yeah. I mean, I don't know. Adults probably process things differently. I mean, my metabolism's probably a lot slower than his, so, you know. Stop those feet, folks. You can't board up yet. The whole train's still busted. You follow? I know. I'm sorry. I'm trying to look for hint coins. Oh, I found it. Okay, let's see. Oh, look. It's Mr. Beluga again. Well, 
Well, Mr. Layton, how are you enjoying your time here in Dropstone? Yeah, no, this is, uh, okay. So, we were playing Professor, uh, Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright, which looks way different than this because it's a 3DS game and it's like a few, quite a few years newer. This is Professor Layton 2, basically. Uh, Professor Layton and the, um, wait a second. I just, I just thought of something. Okay, no, never mind. I was like, at first I was like, oh, have I had the wrong title at the, the whole time? But I don't have a title on here. It's just Mystery Monday. But this is Professor Layton, yeah, in the Diabolical Box, or the version I'm playing, which is Professor Layton and Pandora's Box. But they're the same game. This is just the European version. But yeah, so this is, it's very good. Yeah. I, I actually, this was the first Professor Layton game I played like a month ago. I played it on my own on my DS, uh, and I loved it, and that's why I decided that I wanted to start playing more Layton games. But since it has been a month, there are still some puzzles that give me trouble or that I forgot the solution to because that's how my brain works. It's delightful every once in a while. It's nice to leave the city and enjoy the countryside. Jealous, yeah, are you? And so you should be, young man. There's something about this place that makes you feel like a new man. You still look terrifying, though. And with the village celebrating its 50th anniversary today, our timing couldn't have been better. Come to think of it, your Molentary Express turned 50 this year, didn't it? Hmm, quite the coincidence. How? Wait, if he's... He's got to be like 60 or so, or 70 gotta be pretty damn old. He doesn't look that old. He's just a tiny gremlin man. Uh, yes, indeed it is. Sheer coincidence, of course. Still, it could have been fun to have a double anniversary celebration here at the festival. No, well, okay. You, I'm gonna tell you something, sir. You definitely don't have... your The bags under your eyes don't look this terrifying. You have, like, normal tired bags. Not like... This man looks like he almost has gills under his eyes. Well, we already have a grand 50th anniversary celebration planned at an exclusive venue in London. Oh, is that so? Hmm. I'm sure your party will be on par with the excellence of your train. It will, and on that note, I'm afraid I'll have to excuse myself. Good day to you, Mr. Layton. Wait, really? Wow, fucking rude. I mean... Oh, I know they probably meant it as a joke, but it kind of sucks when people like constantly like ask you if you're tired or other things and you're just like Thanks, I understand that I'm not in perfect condition all the time, but you know Hey, it's sure death. Thank you so much for the host How are you doing? Yeah, the, yeah people are annoying with that it's like I have a friend who's who's like having jaw surgery and stuff and she gets really annoyed because people always like to point out that there's something up with her teeth and she's like, yes, I know. Thanks. Can you fucking like just leave it alone? Okay. Bye, Mr. Beluga. Good day to you, Mr. Beluga. You're still kind of an ass. My, it's already a year since she passed away. Time truly does just fly by. She? It's like my team. I know. Yeah, exactly. It's like I see it every day. Don't. Don't fucking bring it up. Who do you think she was talking about, Professor? Or he was talking about. I haven't the slightest idea, Luke. Oh, Granny Riddleton, what are you doing in town? No fancy seeing you laddies out and about. Me, they booted me off the train until they fix it. If you're after a few puzzles to pass the time, just take a peek inside my shack of wonders. Now I'll be here until I can get back on the train, so just come by if you get a hankering for a puzzle. 
Well, I do have a couple of puzzles I gotta do. Luke's big dinner. Yeah, I'm in her shack. It's very small. Her shack is small. I'm having Luke's big dinner. Luke, are you sure you can really eat all that? You've put in quite an order there. No problem, Professor. I'll clean my plate and still have room for more. It's no wonder the Professor is concerned as Luke's order cost twice what his own did. Below, you can see all the items the two ordered along with their prices. Touch the prices of the items that Luke ordered. Oh, thank you so much. Two years. No, Shack of Wonders is not a euphemism. Well, not with Granny Riddleton. It's actually her Shack of Wonders. If I was gonna say like, hey guys, I'm gonna go explore Sears Shack of Wonders, she'd probably punch me and say that it doesn't exist. Yeah, I know that's just sub time, but yeah, I mean, we've known each Look, I mean, our, our like WhatsApp <laughs> messages go back to like 2017, Seer, or something ridiculous like that. I don't even know how you check like the oldest stuff. Yeah, they go back really far. <laughs> and I'm just like, man, has it been that long? Okay, so. His, okay, so obviously that's Layton's. If I remember right, Layton just got something very simple, like that, I, I think that he got these three, which that would be 27. That would be 35. So then this should cost 70. Maybe. Let's see, that's 28. 38. 45. Yep. Bonk. This should do the trick. Da da da! I'm so good at food. Huh. Wonderful. Yeah. So yeah, we've known each other for quite some time. Like, I I mean, I know I... God, was it the end of 2017 when I started? I keep feeling it was the end of 2018 when I started streaming. But I guess it was 2017. I just started streaming a lot more, like, in the coming years. Man. Good work. If you calculate the total bill, you'll see that the meal costs 105 Knowing the total, Luke must have ordered $70 worth of food and the professor $35 worth. Well, euros or whatever. That's so much money. Luke, how do you have so much money? I don't have that much money and I'm an adult. Once you've got those numbers, the rest is easy. Are you sure you didn't order too much? Nope, this stew's great and the steak is mm, delicious too. Oh gosh, my mom is calling me again. She knows that I stream on Mondays. Hello? I, I'm doing okay, what's up? I know you called me earlier too. Oh, okay. You said this on Michael. That's that's so weird. Cause um, cause yesterday, it, you said that happened yesterday, right? Was it like at night? Oh, okay. Yeah. Probably. Well, that's that's the thing that I thought is kind of weird is that um I mean, I'm streaming right now too. That's why I didn't answer earlier, but then you called back and I'm like, it must be something important then. I had no idea until you just told me, so I'm just Mm-hmm. 
Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's not good. Okay, so basically, just also, Sir has says hello, but basically, guys, there were, apparently there was a fire around where my mom lives, and I had no idea because Texas likes to have Texas news and not a lot else. But uh, yeah, but she's all right. I was about to say, isn't, well, I mean, I guess the most haze you usually get is, like, VOG rather than actual smoke. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so was, was it a, it wasn't a control burn? Was it just, did somebody fuck up? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, somebody messed up. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I will. Love you too, Mom. Bye. But yeah, apparently there was a fire and, um... 40,000 acres, uh, burned. Uh, and it apparently got pretty close, like, they had an evacuation for, uh, Waikoloa Village, where she lives. Um, but thankfully they, they managed to stop the fire before it really- I think it, she said that it affected a few houses, but nothing, like, really in her immediate area. Um, but yeah, and I was just like, man, 40,000 acres is a lot of land. But yeah. So that, that's what that was all about. Because she called me earlier, and I was like, because, you know, I don't always answer if I'm, like, in the middle of something. Or sometimes I'm on the road when she tries to call me. But since she called me a second time, I kind of figured it was probably more important. Oh, I'm back here. This isn't where I want to be. But yeah, no, she's fine. She was like, I don't know if you saw the news. And I was like, I didn't even know until you told me. That's how you judge your calls, too? Yeah. The celebrations appear to be in full swing. Give me more coin. Yeah, if it's important, they'll call it. Exactly, you know. And, you know, I love my mom, but also, like, if she calls me more than, like, three times a week, I generally won't pick up, partially because I tend to be working or streaming at specific times. And I'm just like... I. You know, I don't, my life isn't crazy different every time, like every other day. So I'm just like, mom, I've got like nothing to talk about, really. I mean, I'm kind of like that with everybody. Like, I can't, like even people that I enjoy being around, I can only like talk to them so much. And then I, I feel like I just need like time to recharge. But it's one of these rocks. Or not. Did I? Did I get all three hint coins? I don't even know. Let's just talk to this Eggman. Oh, ho! And who do we have here? Visitors from out of town? Hmm. Indeed we are. We were traveling on the Molentary Express, but we've stopped here for repairs. If you're here for repairs, there's only one place you could be headed, am I right? Uh, only one place we could be headed? Uh, what do you mean, sir? Mm, oh, I was just thinking out loud. Yep, uh, just talking to myself. <laughs> Forget about it. 
Here, did you notice that the festival uh, that, that's going on today here in Dropstone? Today marks the 50th year since the founding of our village. Make sure you get in on the fun. Now you have a puzzle. Did you take one of those toys home with you or did we leave them with them? What are you, what toys? What are you talking about, Andy? Can you believe this weather? It's really the perfect day for a festival. The sunshine has me in such a good mood. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you a puzzle that I tucked away. The ones that repeat, oh, you're talking, I, I call that a plush rather than a toy because it's a it's the ninja otter. Yeah, I have one of them. I think I took the ninja one because I think there were multiple types. Before are four below are four cube sh or four shapes. Three of the shapes form a whole cube when fitted together with an identical shape. However, one shape below is different in this regard and doesn't form a cube when joined with another identical shape. Circle the odd shape out from choices A to D below. Okay, so... Nope, not restart. Memo. Let's see, we know that one's good. That one's good. I think it's C. If I remember right, C is... I, I, I seem to remember C being... Well, actually, C looks kind of... Maybe I'm wrong. It does look like that would fit in there. Actually, no, it would have to be on the opposite side, wouldn't it? Because if you turn that... That, yeah, it's... I'm pretty sure it's C. Oops. <laughs> Submit! This should do but no, I have one of those. I got it! It's sitting on my bed with all of my other stuffed animals. That's right! C will not form a cube. Yeah, okay, yeah, because you can't fit it the right way. Yeah, here, I'll go grab it really quick. You guys want to see it. I got boo on here. I got boo yesterday from Dixie's. I put a few of these guys on my wish list. That's boo. And I found out that his mouth is very deep, and then I apologized because they just stuck my finger in there, you know? So this is the thing he's talking about. It's a little, like, ninja otter thing that's got a bell. And it repeats what you say. But in a high-pitched voice. You know? Like a chipmunk. It's also very blown out. Because, you know, that's how toys are. So yeah, it's also got like a little otter tail butt thing. But yeah, this is what you're talking about, right, Andy? This can sit on the desk right here. All right. Let's keep going. It's both cute and annoying. Exactly, which is why I don't... I Hopefully, if Megan has one, she took the batteries out like immediately. Although the kids aren't that much into making like a lot of noise, so... We did it! Oh, I- I don't want to think about that. That probably is terrible, like, facing two megaphones at each other. Cripes, you just breezed through my best puzzle! I didn't see that coming. While we're talking puzzles, have you ever, uh, heard about the mysterious puzzle-collecting lady? I hear she gathers and stores all the lost puzzles of the world. How she does it is a conundrum wrapped in an enigma-stuffed mystery. You know? Uh, Mr. Nigdrum. That's not a real word. That's not. Bonk. Let's go this way. Wow, look at all the stuff there is to do. I've never been to a festival before. It's wonderful. Oh, that's right, Flora. I've forgotten how you grew up in that one little village. Well, now is your chance to make up for lost time. Let's explore. Yes, let's. Where should we go first? 
Oh, let's look at that booth over there. I want to see what they've got. Wait for me. <laughs> you two watch where you're running or you're liable to crash into something. <gasps> Who could that be? Hello. We're doing some top secret festival prep back here, so you can't come in yet, okay? Okay, fine. Check this stall. What are all those arrows for? Oh, it's a fairground game. Hey there, squirts. Try your hand at this game of mine. I'll tell you what, since business is so slow right now, first try is on me. Gosh, really, mister? Come on, Florilet. We can try together. Okay, this one, I remember this one kind of fucked me up. A bag of sweets dangles from one of three arrows attached to the wall. Assuming that all three arrows are perfectly straight, which arrow is connected to the sweets? I think it's actually, because I remember I kept drawing a line. Because you're like, you'd assume that it's the, um, the bottom one, but I think it's actually, God, it's either the middle or the top, but it's definitely not the bottom. I think it might actually be the top, because this is an optical illusion. <sighs> either the middle or the top. Ah, it's probably the middle. Let's see no, that's wrong. It's the middle. Oops. That wasn't right. Yeah, shut up! I know! No, I don't want to view hints. I already know it's the middle one now. Because the bottom one is the one that they want you to pick. Because it looks like it's the right one, but it's not. Okay, kid, that'll be 20 bucks. Legends Apprentice strikes again! Uh, good eye. Okay, yeah. Arrow B is the one attached to the sweets. This puzzle is an example of the famous Poggendorf optical illusion. When a diagonal line is partially obscured by a straight shape, the viewer tends to not be able to accurately determine which of the lines on the right is the continuation of the one on the left. Yeah. Dang it. Should have known it was the middle one. Nicely done, Shorty. Here's a little something for that fine performance. Really? Gosh, thank you. You got a spring. Thanks, I got a piece of a camera. Oh! Look at all the fruits and veg on this cart. I like how it's just fruits and veg, not fruits and veggies. It probably belongs to the person running that little stand. Oh, but it looks like one of the wheels is dented. That must make it difficult to move. Yeah, I bet it's a real pain. Oh, but you know, that reminds me of a puzzle about a dented wheel. Bum, bum, 20 out of 20. In the back of a train yard, there's an old warped wheel lining on, lying on the ground as shown below. While no longer functional, the wheel is interesting because when rolled on a flat surface, its axle traces a funny pattern if you look at it from the side. Of the five diagrams below, which one depicts the actual path of the axle? And listen to Nat for a minute, okay. Nap away. Yeah, if I remember right, it's this one, because it goes... Because that's too severe. Yeah, it's A. Hmm. Let's see if this Correct. That was almost too easy. That's right. The diagram A correctly traces the path of the axle as the wheel rolls. You probably won't see this wheel on a train anytime soon, but it'd be fun to watch it bounce around. That's right, Luke. You sure worked that one out quickly. If you've got any more puzzles, I've got answers. I'm impressed you knew a puzzle like that. I've never heard that one before. Well, I try my best to impress the professor. <laughs> oh, no. Coin. Coin! I wonder if they sell any local delicacies. Who knows, Professor? Uh, let's go to the left. Oh! Hello, nose friend. You're an awful lot like the lady nose, except you're a dude. 
Do you ride the train or do you in the back of your... Well, this is true. Gracious, this weather couldn't be finer for celebrating Dropstone's fancy 50th. My memory is not what it used to be, but you're not from around here, are you? Waiting for the train? How do I know, you ask? Well, this isn't the first time it's happened. As fancy as that train is, it must be in rotten shape. Chin up, Sonny. More often than not, a train gets fixed in a few hours. What with the festival and all, hmm, there's plenty to see and do in the meantime. Thank you for the information. If I could trouble you for a moment, though, I'd like to ask about a relic known as the Elysian Box. You may also know it as Pandora's Box. Oh, dear me! <clears throat> um, oh, I mean, oh, dear me, I've never heard of the dreadful thing. N never, you hear? Hmm? Hmm, well, I'm not sure if I want to talk to you anymore. To be frank, I was in high spirits till you came along. Now I'm grumpier than a cat in the rain. You want to prove you're sorry for ruining my day? Solve this here puzzle. World's best golfer. A pro golfer has the amazing ability to consistently putt distances of 3, 5, 7, and 11 meters. Strangely enough, though, those are the only distances he can putt. Currently, our golfer stands on the green with his ball 20 meters from the hole. What's the fewest number of strokes he can use to get the ball into the hole? Assume that if the ball is hit farther than the distance remaining to the hole, it will roll over to the other side without going into the cup. Because if he hit it 11 twice, it would go 22 meters. But there's something they don't tell you about this puzzle, and I only know this because I had to look it up because I was like, what the fuck? But basically, there's a bit of misinformation here. Well, it's not misinformation. The assumption is that you only can shoot the ball straight at the hole. But at no point in this puzzle do they ever say that that's the case. So the correct answer for this is two shots because if he shoots it off to the side, a little bit further away, and then back at it like a triangle uh, from that original 20, then he can totally make it in two shots. And the puzzle's like, well, that seems like it might be impossible, but he's a pro golfer. <laughs> and I'm like, well, fuck you, game. Good job. If our friend, the pro golfer, puts two diagonal shots as shown above, he can sink the ball in two shots. No one ever said the golfer had to putt directly towards the hole, <laughs> did they? <sighs> sure, in order to sink the putt using the method shown above, he'd need to calculate the angle of each shot perfectly, but that's probably why they call him a pro. Yep. Yep. That's the ticket, very nice. You've got a good head on those shoulders, Sonny. Mind you, you need one to wear that hat. Thanks. Okay, um, I wonder what's growing in this field. Harnessing the power of nature is quite an impressive feat. Okay, uh, I don't care about that, Leighton. I care about hint coins. What lay dormant in these bushes? No, I don't want to use my feet. Stop using my feet. I want to touch. Ugh. Hint coins? Hint? Ugh. Does one of these trees have a hint coin? Okay, well, apparently we're just we're just not. Yet. Oh, there's one. I was about to say, like, Jesus, I know there are hint coins here. Well, whatever. Let's go back. At least we got one out of that. To the right. Another puzzle. Hey there, fellas. I'm in a real bind here. Help an old gal out, will ya? I was poking at the land, but it kept, like, they kept talking. What seems to be the problem, madame? 
my sweet little bird fell down a hole in the ground. Oh, I want to help the poor thing, but I just can't reach her. Do you have any ideas? Hmm. I can. I believe there's something we can try. The trapped bird. Oh no, Laurel's per poor little bird has fallen down a long winding hole in the ground. In front of the bird are the three paths labeled A, B, and C. Which tunnel should the bird take in order to make it back above ground? Watch out for Sleepy Snake. Uh, sleepy Snake is A. Bum, 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 bum. Work backwards. Uh, I just try... Nope. So that goes back. I'm getting I'm confusing myself. What? What about C? Uh, none of them, apparently. The, the bird was just this bird is gonna die. Oh wait, never mind, it's B. I just I got confused. It's B. <laughs> and now to test my theory. Schwonk! A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Uh, da, just pour water in the hole. No, that's a, that's a solution in, later. Or No, that was in the previous one. We had to pour water in the hole to get the tennis ball out. Very nice. The bird can safely escape her underground confines by following tunnel B. Any other tunnel will lead her deeper underground or into the mouth of a very hungry snake. Puzzle 36, the trap bird is now in your puzzle index. There's my little birdie. I was worried she'd be stuck down there forever. I wish I had some way of thanking you properly. Oh, I know you can have this tea set and these lovely herbs. Take them, I insist. The tea set minigame has been added to the trunk. <laughs> Not a true gentleman without it. You got the ingredient oasis leaf, brisk berry, citronia seed. Uh, tea set allows you to mix and brew a variety of herbal teas. Add multiple measures of an herb to increase that herb's effect on the tea. First thing we're gonna do is actually, let's make this hamster work out. Basically, we make the hamster chase stuff. You want rectangles four or more spaces away, so don't. So think, really think about where you put it. Yep. Uh, okay, we got to get him to peak physical condition. Look at him; he's so chunky. The goal is eight. Oh no, wait, we can't do eight yet. We can only do. We can only do six. Frick. Sorry, Hammy. We'll have to worry about that later. But what we can do is make some tea. Okay, this is just telling you to combine the ingredients. I already know how to do that. Eh, and, you just, and then you make tea, and there's 12 recipes total! Bonk. Bonk. Time to brew. Oh, the suspense. What will this tea taste like? Do you like the little trumpeting Leighton and <laughs> Luke here? Oh, it's a little 
sour and a little sweet. Yum. I certainly have to tip my hat to this tea's drinkability. I imagine it would be delicious iced as well. Yep, and since it's nice and light, I'm sure just about anyone would be happy to have a cup. Hmm, yes, I myself am partial to its lovely fruity aftertaste. Yay! Okay, that's the only tea I can make right now. Also, I mean, there's the camera. Okay, so we just arrange the camera parts until they're where it's supposed to be. Donk. Button. It's wrong. That's... There we go. Button. Uh, uh, oh man, I don't remember where some of these parts go. Yep. Uh, that's, I don't think that actually goes there. I'm pretty sure this goes here, though. a spinny bit. What is this? This is, uh... Uh, this is a thing. Uh... Actually, maybe this is... I think that's the viewfinder, now that I think about it. That makes sense. Just kind of shove that there for now. We'll figure that out later. And there's still quite a few more parts to the camera. Okay, let's close the trunk. Okay. Oh, yeah. Forgot, we need to check for hint coins. Oh! Tree puzzle. Look at this crazy-looking tree, Professor. It's all warped. With a structure like that, it must be quite old. I wonder how long it's been here. Mm. Oh, Luke. Our little conversation reminded me of a puzzle I know. Care to hear it? Why not? Yeah. Trees on an old road. The country road you see here is decorated with a single straight row of trees, each a set distance from its neighbor. Of the five trees labeled A to E, which two trees have the greatest distance between them? Mm. Study the image carefully and draw a line between the letters of the two trees you've chosen. Oh yeah, I remember this is one of those very straight fucking forward ones. Ooh, what other trees would it be? Yeah. That was almost too easy. That's right. No matter how you look at it, trees A and E clearly have the greatest distance between them. But because they're trying to trick you into thinking in between each individual tree, like their neighboring tree. But really, it's just which tree is the furthest away from the other tree. Trixie, Trixie, Layton. Perhaps I should have prepared something a bit more challenging for you, Luke. Well, we'll save that for next time. And for now, let's continue our walk about the village. You got the new hand- Yeah, tree stump! Wait, what does the tree stump do? Exercise. Got any snacks around here? Oh yes. And the <laughs> the hamster talks, by the way. Look at him. Oh. He's currently blobby, but soon <laughs> he won't be blobby. Hammy walked I'm nine steps. Tomorrow for sure. His level went from five to four. Now he's flabby. But now I gotta get to 14 steps, which obviously I can't do with this amount of toys for now. Actually, it took me a while to get the final one to get him to like superb shape, but it's okay. We'll get back to that. Oh, now we can go up here. Look at all these stalls! Now this is what I call a festival! 
Oh, I just love the hustle and bustle. It's so wonderful. Shall we take in some more of the plaza sights then? Definitely. Professor Luke and Flora decide on a spot of sightseeing in front of the village hall. Nobody, well, I mean, Luke apparently is very good with animals, which means he can communicate with them. So maybe only, he, maybe he's the only one that can hear the hamster's voice. Hello. <laughs> Parting with one so dear to your heart is even more painful than the tightest wig. When she was a child, I used to read her until she fell asleep. She looked just like an angel. <laughs> oh, nothing cuts so deep as separation's knife. <laughs> Ripes, I don't know about that. I've never really given it much thought. Oh, fret not. I wasn't expecting one as young as yourself to fully understand my malai. <sighs> don't mind me. I'll, I'll just excuse myself now. Do you think he got dumped? Actually, he's in Kinda sad in a different way, didn't he? Best not pry too deeply into the private affairs of others, Luke. It's not becoming of a gentleman. You're right, Professor. I'm always right. Unless I'm in uh, Professor Lurton, Layton versus Phoenix right, in which case he's right. Ah. <sighs> Hey, fellows, pleasure to meet you. My name's Albert, and I am Beautiful Dropstone's number one fan. I heard you've been running around Dropstone asking questions, but you haven't talked to me yet. If you solve this puzzle, then I, the king of Dropstone trivia, will answer your questions. Thanks, Albert. Boys Club. Below is a wheel of male and female portraits. Select a portrait, and counting that portrait as one... Move six portraits either clockwise or anti-clockwise and cross out the last of these six portraits. Repeat this pattern starting from the next available portrait and always moving on in the same direction. Remember to skip the ones you crossed out. If you start at the right portrait, you can remove all the women in the wheel, leaving only the six portraits of men behind. Which portrait is this? Remember, you can only... or You can move clockwise or anti-clockwise, which is just... Counterclockwise. Okay, so basically we have to get rid of all the women. One, two, three, four, six. You start off with one. Men. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, nope, that's wrong. Clear. One, two, three, four, six. Six. One, two, three, four, five. Ha ha! It's this gentleman. Submit. This should do the trick. Donk. And there we have it. Very nice. If you begin counting from this man and proceed anti-clockwise around the wheel, you'll eventually remove all the female portraits. Yay! The women are gone. Expertly solved. Oh, it gave me chills. It really did. Okay, ask away. If you've got any questions about the village or its history, I'm your man. It's uh, slightly off topic, but do you know anything about a relic known as the Elysian Box? You may have heard people referring to it as Pandora's Box as well. Hmm, it's hard to believe, but you've gone beyond my area of expertise. I've never heard of the thing. What I can tell you is that older people as village jump at the very mention of the supernatural. From what I gather, it seems they have some connection to the village in the days of its founding. Hmm, unfortunately, that's all the info I can really give you about that subject. Sorry to let you down. Yeah, that really was a letdown, actually. <laughs> This notice board is covered in cow posters. 
Well, it could be covered in cow patties, so just be glad that it's not. Okay, um, e. E. Ha ha! Hint coin two. Hint coin three. This circular flower bed is truly a delight. Let's go to the left. There are some more stalls over the other way. Let's go see what kind of stuff they've got going on. Okay, fine. Wow, look at those gigantic cow balloons. It looks like the villagers are setting up for the livestock competition. Livestock competition? That sounds like fun. Yes, I'd certainly like to see the competition myself, but it doesn't appear quite ready to start yet. While we're waiting, can we go and see more of the village? Certainly, we can return later when the competition commences. Yay! The professor, Luke, and Flora decide to walk around until the livestock competition starts. Those large balloons of are in the shape of cows, or at least a cow-like approximation. No, the competition still hasn't started. Yeah, I know. Uh, no, I don't want to touch that. Yeah, well, to be fair, Andy, it's like 50% it's like of the game. Sorry, my brother just sent me, like, a direct message on Twitch. But yeah, no, no, no. It's it's going to happen very soon. Shit, I keep touching the thing. Which is really funny, because usually Leighton, like, picks up on things immediately. Ha! Ah, pen it. Touch the man's feet. Touch his feet. Touch the cow. Touch the cow. Yeah, that's good enough. I mean, I haven't really used many hint coins at all, so I'm not too worried. Now we can go to the left. Oh, hello. It's the mailman. Parcel. Oh. Uh, Parcel. Well, yeah, I know, but it's just, it's... We don't ask about the methods, Andy. This is just like anime logic, remember? Anything can happen. I never forget a face, and I don't know any of yours. You must have come on the Molentary Express. Since you're new in town, let me clue you in on a few key facts about Dropstone. I know you're interested, so don't act all bashful and reserved in my account. Listen, if you only know one name in Dropstone, make sure it's Mr. Anderson's. Not only is the man swimming in money, but he basically runs Dropstone. But he's a top bloke who treats everyone with respect, even the postman. Eh, that'd be me, by the way. <laughs> you can tell a lot about a man by the way he treats his local postie. But even nice guys like him have troubles. I hear he spends all his time worrying about his daughter. That reminds me, I just saw a pair of unusual characters head up towards Mr. Anderson's house. They said they were policemen from London, but something about them seemed awfully fishy to me. Two people, huh? Are you referring to Inspector Chelmy and his assistant? Mm, Chelmy, you say? Mm, that sounds right. He says he was here on official police business and needed to see Mr. Anderson. Do you think there's a connection between Mr. Anderson and the Elysian Box Professor? Well, it seems that Mr. Anderson serves as head of this community. It's only natural he'd know about who and what passes through this area. Yes, for various reasons. Actually, there's not even that many, like, young women around here. Well, yes, there are, but, you know. He's a big fish, all right. You're bang on the money about that. I mean, even the owner of the Molentary Express stops in to pay him a visit when he's in town. Yeah, I bet those two officers are being waiting on the kings at Mr. Anderson's as we speak. But enough chit-chat. We've got a festival going on, so go and have some fun. Pink. So many balloons. Stool. Barrel. Sign. Up. Oh, in we go, I guess. Up. Oh. This cat sculpture certainly is uh, expressive. Yep, he's a cute one. Oh, if you like cats, Professor, I've got just the puzzle for you. 
crazy cats. One of the three colored pictures are A, B, or C is of the same picture of, as the black and white one displayed on the far left. Can you find which one? Yeah, they're flipped and their colors are inverted. Okay. So which ones can we rule out immediately? Uh, this one because the eyebrows are too short. No. Um. Uh, this one, the background's too skinny. This one's just right. It's B. This should do the trick. Got it. Man, I do like Wonderful. like spot the difference things. Well spotted. B is the picture you were looking for. The cat's eyebrows in A and the pattern of the lines in the background in C are different from the pictures on the left. You always make it look so easy. Crazy cats. Talk to this lady. Greetings, I don't think I've seen you around these parts before. May I ask your name? Of course, my name is Herschel Layton, professor of archaeology, Gressenel, uh, Gressen Heller University. Charmed, sir, welcome to Dropstone, Professor Layton. My name is Dorothy, and I am a maid in the service of the Anderson family. Tell me what brings you to our humble village. My companions and I are after an artifact known as the Elysian Box. Have you heard that name before? Hmm, can't say that I have, but the master is quite knowledgeable about curiosities such as that. The master, madam? Oh yes, excuse my thoughtlessness. I keep forgetting you're new here. You see, I'd venture there's not a single resident of our village who doesn't know Mr. Anderson. I see. Well, if it's possible, we'd be very grateful for an audience with Mr. Anderson. Normally, I'd say he'd be glad to receive you, but lately he's been preoccupied with his daughter. I don't mean to pry, but has there been some issue between Mr. Anderson and his daughter? Well, yes. Just between you and me, his daughter has been secretly planning a trip alone. Secretly planning a trip alone? I hope she's not planning on running away. What's worse is that the master has started to suspect something is going on behind his back. But after much discussion, we servants have decided to give her a warm send-off. So you're in support of allowing this girl to go off on her own. Why is that? Because the purpose of the trip is to fulfill the wishes of the young lady mistress's late grandmother. I see. May I inquire as to what those wishes might have been? Well, I myself have only heard scraps of the story from other people, so I can't say much. But whatever the request, it's one that the young mistress seems to feel is extremely important. Oh, look at that. Here I am gossiping away when there's supper to prepare. Please excuse me, Professor Layton. I need to get back to work. Oh, wait a second. Rat, she's gone. Is it just me, Professor? Does it sound like Mr. Anderson's daughter is planning to leave home? If she is, doesn't it seem strange to you that the family servants are cheering her on? <clears throat> yes, very. And think about consequences should Mr. Anderson find out what's been going on. The servants must have a truly solid reason if they've resolved to keep a secret like this. What could it possibly be? I don't know. I'm getting the feeling that Dropstone isn't as ordinary as it looks. You're not the only one, Luke. <laughs> but enough speculation. Let's go and explore more of the village. Okay, Professor. Okay, um, let's search for coins. Coin. 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 Oh, these are so cute. Okay. 
I don't think there are any other hidden puzzles here. Not that I would say that one was especially hidden. It was kind of just there, but you know. Hello. Hey, it's Romy! Hey there, I'm a world traveler, but I'm stuck here until I can score a ticket on the Molentary Express. I was hoping for a freebie, so I told Mr. Beluga one of my puzzles to break the ice. Yeah, unfortunately for me, he got all hot under the collar when he couldn't solve it. Here, maybe you'll have better luck with it. What rotten luck! While trying to pick up your luggage, you find that your bag is at the very back of the pile. The porter unloading the luggage claims the other boxes in the hold have prevented him from unloading yours. Mm. Use your wits to move all of the blocks out of the way and reclaim your luggage. Okay. God, I hate these puzzles so much! How much do I hate them? It's a lot. Okay, um... So that's that. Wow, we did it! Not. But, now we can scoot one of those up there. Bonk! Wow, actually that- okay, that was easier than I thought when I just fucking did it. And there we have it. Yay! We did it! It's <laughs> yeah, clever lot, aren't you? With people like you around, maybe we might actually solve the mystery of the Molentary Express. People say that the train occasionally makes a stop at a phantom town found on no map. Could just be a wild rumor, though. Well, who knows? An uncharted town? Wow, I wonder if that's true. Baggage claim. Okay, well, do you have any other puzzles for me, sir? Yep, a ride on the Molentary Express costs more money than I can scrape together. See, I'm a rambling man. If only I could afford to ramble by a luxury train. Yep. What a cute little farm. Yes, and the weather is so nice that even the animals grazing in the field seem to be in a good mood. Hmm. And this seems like a perfect time for a quick puzzle. See if you can solve this one. Four horses. Oh, yeah. You have four horses, all of which travel at different speeds. In traveling from point A to point B, these horses take one, two, four, and six hours, respectively. One day, you decide to move all your horses from point A to point B. However, you can only move a maximum of two horses at a time, and you need to ride a horse back to point A each time knowing uh, you return to move your other horses. Knowing you can only move as fast as the slowest horse you're traveling with, what's the fewest number of hours it will take to move all the horses? Look at that. The, I like how, like, the four-hour horse is a tubby horse, and the six-hour horse is, like, the most emaciated-looking thing I've seen in my life. It's actually kind of sad. Those poor horses. What did they ever do to, do to decide? They do to deserve that. I can't talk. I'm sorry. Okay. There. Yeah, let's say you, you did one hour. Or no, you two hours. You one hour back. That's three. And then you go that way. Um. Shit. It's. Crossing back, you might, you want to move as quickly as possible, so make sure you put yourself in a position to cross over to A on the one hour horse when possible. However, if you always make traveling back on your one hour horse your top priority, you may, may end up wasting time on other legs of the journey. Don't assume you always need a return from B to A on the one hour horse. Okay, well. Well, if you took the six-hour horse first, 
and the four hour horse. Well, no, that wouldn't, that doesn't make any sense. What if you took the six and the two? <sighs> That'd be six hours. And then seven, eight, 12. Hey, hey, this this hurts. In order to move all your horses from A to B in the shortest amount of time, you'll need to cross over from A to B three times and return from B to A twice. How do you make the most of... Okay. So we'll need to move three times. First, bring a one hour and two hour horses to B, then return to A on your one hour horse. Next, you bring your four and six hour horses over to B and, oh, okay. Yeah, that's what it was, I forgot. Yeah, so you get over there. So we get over there in. Yeah, okay, so basically, you take these over, so that's two hours, and then four hours, because you get back. Two, four, six, so that's ten. And then you take your one hour horse back, so that's eleven. So thirteen hours. Pretty sure that's right. I think it's thirteen. 13, okay. <laughs> I was like, ah, uh. uh. Strikes again. It's just, like, these kind of puzzles throw me off because I'm like, there's so many numbers I gotta think about. That's right. To start, you take your one and two hour horses. Then you ride your one hour horse back. Next, ride out on your four and six hour horses and return on your two hour horse. At this point, you've been moving the horses for 11 hours. Three in the first excursion and eight in the next. Now you should be back at point A with your one and two hour horses. Ride them both across to point B to finish the task in 13 hours. Man, see, even though I've played the game before, it's still stuff like that. You can't really just, I don't know. I can't just remember it, but. The animals out on the farm look like they're really enjoying the sun. Of course, Luke, animals enjoy nature's glory as much as you and I do, if not more so. I got a tiny part. What a lovely farm. Give me your coins. Give me your coins. Give me your bush coins and your ground coins. Thank you. Give me your fence coins. No, I wanted to look at the crack. Right, adventure, I guess I'd say this farm also belonged to Mr. Anderson. Yep. I, yeah, I don't. I stop. I just want to look for heat points. Well, you know that's good enough. Let's go this way. Wow, look at the size of that mansion. I bet you could have got lost in there. It is impressive to say the least. I'm sure that massive manor belongs to Mr. Anderson. So that's where Inspector Chelmy and his assistant went, huh? I'd like to see the place for myself. Can we go take a look? No, for now, I think it's our best course of action is to gather what information we can in the village. Besides, I imagine that the Andersons already have their hands full with their current guests. Oh yeah, this guy. Whew, that should do it. Uh, good afternoon. What are you doing there, sir? Me? Uh, I'm just doing a little fishing in this here lake. Mm, sounds like a lot of work. Have you had much luck? Actually, that's a good question. Now I think about it, how many have I managed to catch today? A large net has been cast out in a pond to catch some fish. The pond's surface is small, but it's actually wider underwater, so parts of the sunken net are no longer visible from the surface. Assuming that there are no tears in the net, and that the whole rim of the net is constructed of a single length of rope that ends on the shore, how many of the fish visible in the pond will be caught when the net is pulled up? 
Okay, so this is just all visual blah. So basically the net goes like that. And that. And that. And that. And that. And that. Wait. No, 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 I did that wrong. Yeah. Uh, sorry, we just need to... Eh, 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 eh. Okay, like that. And only the fish that are caught inside of the net so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I think that's it, actually. Because all the rest of these are outside of the bounds of the net. Unless I'm missing one, but I'm pretty sure it's just seven. Submit! Here goes! Seven fish! Face of cake. This stuff still hurts my brain, though. That's right! To solve this puzzle, you need to imagine how the unseen parts of the net connect, which should look something like the illustration above. As you can see, the net will catch a total of seven fish. Where's the Pepsi? Okay, I still don't have Pepsi. I'm sorry. All I have is a very small amount of orange drink left. I mean, if you think about it, Pepsi is... You know, never mind. Pepsi's not orange at all. Pepsi is definitely a dark soda. Unless they came up with an orange Pepsi. But I think there's only ever been Pepsi and then, like... Crystal Pepsi, which was clear and weird? Or is it Pepsi Crystal? I don't know. One of those two. But I don't... They don't... I don't think there's been any, like, colored Pepsis. Have there? Good. Man, it's weird to think about how little I know about soda, because I just don't drink very much. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pepsi man. Woohoo! What a haul! Tonight I feast like a king! Okay, cool. Houses built on the waterfront are so refreshingly cool. Isn't that also kind of dangerous, Layton? I mean, what if it floods? Okay, um... Yeah, the view's great. I just wanted to see if there were any more coins. I, I know, Layton! It's very cool! Got the hint coin! Bye. Oh, there's Chelmy and whoever the hell you are. Uh, I don't have. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's a lot of things I don't have right now. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, an apple. All the fruits that I have are like in my little chest freezer for smoothies. <laughs> Stream's going well. We've made it fairly far, and now we just ran into Remy, this guy. But the puzzles have been going well. I did have to get all the hints in the last one, because I was incredibly confused. Uh, strawberries, blackberries, and raspberries. But like I said, they're all frozen solid. And eating a frozen strawberry, you might as well just break your teeth. Like, right then and then. <laughs> Um, Professor, I think this chap here fell asleep standing up. Judging by his uniform, he must be a security guard. And I certainly don't approve of sleeping on the job. Hmm, perimeter is secured. Please confirm identity by solving this puzzle. Oh, okay, it's puzzle time. But when it comes to snacks, I don't... I Did I have snacks the other day? I don't know. I had some chips. 
But I ate those the other day. I had trail mix. I don't have any more of that. I, I never really think about snacks until, like, I'm out of them. Now, three loops of rope are tangled together with a single red rope that has been tied in a very loose knot. Can you work out how many of the smaller ropes, loops of the rope would get caught in this knot when the red rope is pulled tight from both ends? Remember, even if a loop passes through the knotted part of the red rope now, it might fall away when the red rope is tightened. I don't know what to do now. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I'm... Okay, well... That's in there. You have fruit by the foot? I do not. My roommates had, like, fruit snacks. They had gushers, but they're all gone. They've been gone for, like, a week. Okay, um... So the blue is not in there. Neither is the yellow. One. Consider it's either one or zero. Solved. It's wrong. Ah, maybe well, it's zero. I suppose that's one possibility. Uh, I hate this. Oh, you know, it probably... Submit. I swear, if it's not zero, I'm gonna... To test my theory. Okay, yeah, he did his little smile. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Good thinking. Yeah, not a single loop will become truly entangled in the knot that forms. When you pull the red rope away and form a knot, one loop will fall away and the other two will hang from the red rope, free of the knot. Yeah. <sighs> Correct answer confirmed. Well done, sir. Thanks. He must be hopelessly addicted to puzzles if he's talking about them in his sleep. Even I don't do that. Are you sure, Leighton? You, you can't hear yourself when you're asleep. Well... We did that puzzle. Hello, Chelmy. How are you doing? Hmm. Oh, it's Inspector Chelmy. Well, look who it is. Hello, Inspector. Are you returning from the Anderson estate? I think I got a bit of sleep. It's only 3 a.m. Oh, geez. Yeah. Well, do your best. I'm sure you'll be fine. Thank you so much for stopping by, though. I hope that you get plenty of sleep. I don't know where you get your information, Leighton, but you're as sly as a fox. As a matter of fact, I did just come from there, but Mr. Anderson himself wasn't home. Seems he's off presiding over some livestock competition or other. A likely story, I'm sure. I'm curious, have you found a connection between Mr. Anderson and the case you're investigating? Not that it's any of your business, but perhaps you can be of help. Now, I've heard rumors that he tried to find this Elysian box in the past, so I went to talk to him. Before I got to the house, the butler told me he wasn't home and that I should leave at once. <sighs> Can you believe it? Mind you, I wouldn't be surprised if he was just pretending to not be at home. Now, I went out of my way to go up and see the man. The least he could he could do is offer me a cup of... A, a cup of what? I don't know. But why would Mr. Anderson be interested in finding in the Elysian box in the first place? It's anyone's guess, Luke. We won't know more until we can ask him in person. In that case, I guess it's... I suppose we should head over to the livestock competition Mr. Anderson is judging. Hm, fine. Let his baronship roll around in the mud with his precious cows. I shall be elsewhere. As far as I'm concerned, the whole thing's nothing more than a frivolous distraction for the rich. Now I can only assume his obsession with the box stems from the excess of time and money on his hands. If you see anything that might help this investigation, report it straight to, to me straight away, you hear? We are always happy to cooperate, Inspector. Now please excuse us. Fine, off you go. Come along, Barton. We've got work to do. Mm, oh, yeah, yes, sir. 
or Barton. All right, we better hurry back to the competition grounds. Professor Luke and Flora decide to return to the site of the livestock competition. But Flora has been... <laughs> I was like... Oh, this weird froggish man. No oh boy! No oh boy, I'm in a tight spot. I wanted to make a clean cut in this board, but I botched it right up. It's pretty much useless as is. Can you think of a way to turn the piece into a solid square? Board cutter one. Here we have an oddly shaped board. Since this board is rather unwieldy as it is, you decided to cut it into two pieces and rejoin these pieces to form a square. Assuming you aren't allowed to flip either of the pieces over once the board is cut, where should you make the cut in order to make a square of the piece? Yeah, and a carpenter named Balsa. He's <laughs> so good, right? So great. What a good name. Well, how did he get a hole in this thing, though? That's the question. <laughs> Actually, uh... Hmm. Beautiful. Actually, that's not it at all. Never mind. Because <laughs> this is the problem right here. But basically, we need to cut it. Cut that out. Nope. Nope. Too many cuts. Man, I am. Why am I being. Why am I so bad at these? Okay. Um. No, that wouldn't work because they're still. Well. No. Wait. No. That's three wide. Fuck. The final square will be four units tall by four. Well, okay. <clears throat> it's our by what the hint said. Yeah. Okay. Not quite. Oh, because that's three. So if I even if I cut that off, that would be too tall. But then I can't do that because there's that. Oh, fucking shit. Oh, this is really fucking hurting my brain. You have to cut the board in two separate pieces to solve the puzzle. I, I know that. 
Doesn't it look like the area around the coal? Yeah, I know! Dumb bastard? Of course I fucking know that. Ugh. Oh, this is so goddamn easy, and I fucking... Consider this puzzle solved. Ah! I was thinking too hard. And there we have it. I hate this. Yeah, excellent. It's easier than it looks. Shut up, puzzle! Don't... judge me. Woohoo! Nat did the trick! Thanks! Now I can finally get back to building that shed out of crappy wood that I don't know how to cut because I'm not a real carpenter. Yeah. I don't like how shifty eyed you are. You have another puzzle for me? Mm, for some reason, all the old timers in here are really cagey about the origins of Dropstone. I've got a hunch that something strange must have happened before the village was founded. Oh, puzzle. If I'm not mistaken, this building must be the village hall. Yep, it look, but it looks like it's closed for the day. Well, they probably wanted to give everyone a chance to enjoy today's festivities. Luke, this reminds me of a puzzle set in front of a village hall like this one. Get to give it a go. You know I do, Professor. Okay. Three people at odds with one another are running for mayor in the upcoming town election. They're all locals of the town, which has a voter population of 40. God, the number puzzles are what, like, really get me. In order to win, a candidate must get more votes than any other candidate. If each of the 40 voters casts a single vote and every vote is recognized, what is the fewest number of votes a candidate needs to secure victory? There's 40, and then 40 divided by 3 is not a number. It's 13, so they'd need... Wouldn't 14 be the fewest? Like, I think I... Actually, I think I did that before, and it was like this. Right, but... Think about how many votes will be cast in the town, excluding the three cast by the candidates themselves. Yeah, I... The three candidates themselves also have the right to vote. Of course, since each of them wants to win, you can take it for granted that each candidate will vote for themselves. You feel undead? Well, welcome. I'm sure you don't look undead. You probably look fantastic. Okay. Ugh. No, oh, you're fine. Okay, fucking, I hate this. Yeah. Find the number of votes it takes to gain a majority in a pool of 37 voters and add one additional vote to that sum to get your answer. Okay, so 37 divided by 3. Well, 12 times 3. 13. So I guess it would have to be 14. And maybe it is 14. I swear to God, if it's not 14, I will... Just leave it to me! No, it's not 14! Why the fuck is it not 14?! Yeah, looks like I botched that uh, one. I hate this. Is it 13, then? Like, of... Uh, I fucking hate the way that they describe these fucking puzzles. Like, for... That is the fewest to win. Unless it's 13, and they're not talking about themselves. Uh, back. Yeah, one, unless it has to be 15. Oh. I feel like that's Just also wrong. Leave it to me. 
No, that's also ah! I, f I fucking hate this. Ugh. God, I I hate number puzzles so fucking much. Like so goddamn much. Yeah, I don't care about spoilers. It's so fucking stupid. Oh, with certainty. Man, why do they got it's twenty, apparently, to do it with certainty. I guess that makes sense, because then they definitely would- because it's not just between the three of them. Ah! That's right, the winner needs at least 20 votes. Since each of the candidates dislikes the other two, they will probably all vote for themselves, which means yeah. Ah! I, I hate that logic, though. It's so fucking stupid. Like, it makes sense, but I'm like, how- I don't know, who thinks of these? Yeah. Even if another candidate gathered all the remaining 18 votes, that wouldn't be enough to overcome the candidate with 20 votes. Yeah, so. It's dumb. Yep. Boop, boop. Sorry. Didn't realize there was going to be music. Well done! Now we really should get back to investigating the village. Yeah, I, I hate that. Like, those kind of things fucking... They fuck me up because you think one way, but it's something completely different. Hmm, look at this little monument here, Professor. It appears to be commemorating something. Let's see what's written on it. Oh, the wrong date. Dropstone was founded 50 years ago, and the founders commissioned a stone sculpture to commemorate that day. Unfortunately, the dozy sculptor managed to engrave the wrong date onto it. The whole village had to live with some erroneous sculpture until some bright spark realized that converting it in a certain way would enable the correct date to be displayed. Think about what the sculpture could have been converted to in order to display the correct date. On which date was Dropstone founded? You're alive? Welcome, Foe. I'm glad that you're alive. How are you doing? How was- how was class? Hopefully it wasn't too bad. Actually, oh no, this isn't your long day. Your long day is later, right? You went to sleep- oh, okay. Well, I mean, that's fine. Naps are okay. Naps are good. Seer actually just got up from a nap not that long ago, so. Tomorrow till night, yeah. Well, hopefully you're able to get out early again if things are smooth and people don't. No, you didn't get up. Well, you woke up, okay? I mean, that's the same, I guess. When was Dropstone founded? Okay, this one I remember because you see it says 12-8, but it's like, that doesn't make any sense. Converting it a certain way would enable the correct date to be displayed. So if you um, take this memo and you cut the date in half because it would be filled with water, then you get 1, 13, 8. <laughs> you went to bed with your axolotl? Aw. Oh. No, 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 yeah. <laughs> Real axolotls are small and should be kept in the water at all times. It's okay. Foe Fo keeps her axolotl in water in Minecraft the way it's supposed to be. Wait, I think that's 13 or... Wait. Yeah, that would... But, but... Wait, no, that wouldn't be it. Wait, what? Okay, now I'm getting confused. What are you talking about? Puzzle and text tells you the 
that the sculptor engraved the wrong date into the stone. So you know that 12-8 isn't the date that Dropstone was founded. Okay, yeah. Your chair can go entirely- Mine doesn't have a footrest. It can go pretty far back, but I don't really like leaning back that far in the chair because it's terrifying. <sighs> so I usually keep it up pretty straight. Yeah. She has a much fancier chair than me. My chair is literally just here for my ass to be somewhere while I'm streaming. Okay, so drop stone. I think that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah, because that's still technically a one. So yeah, that maybe. Yeah, I mean, I guess a three could look like that. Let's... I don't like the fact that there wasn't a zero, but I... And now to test my theory. Okay, he smiled. I was like, uh... huh. It's great for naps. I don't know. I mean, I guess that's the good thing about my room just being one large room with the bed over there. So if I want to take a nap, I just like saunter over there and just plop down. Brilliant. Okay, yeah, because cause the water, yes. When converted into a fountain, water fills the f bowl and then the date is reflected correctly. How were we supposed to really know that or think about that? You know, I don't know. I don't think outside the box enough, I guess. But yes, I'm glad that you had a good nap, though. Just make sure you eat. I don't know if you've had much since this morning. Because I know we discussed food yesterday and then we both fell asleep. And then I woke up and ate, like, I had, like, Nutella toast. And hot dogs. I yeah, and pizza rolls. I had a couple of things before I started stream. I was like, "Hey, turning that. Ah, that works." According to the writing here, this village was founded by its first settler fifty years ago. Fifty years sounds like a long time for a person, but I, I suppose it's not very long for a village. Quite so. But this fact just invites more questions. Why did the settler? come here in the first place. It's hard to believe he or she simply set forth from their old residence to found a new village. Yay! But yes, I'm glad you found time to eat during... Okay, this is a... thing. Maybe that actually goes there. No, I don't want to turn it. No, that actually seems very wrong. Wait, but I have to put something in there. <laughs> You're gonna leave your house and found a new village? Well, let me know when you do that. I'd like to check out this village. That, mm, that feels like that should have a thingy attached to it. Of course, this could also be turned the wrong way. Oh wait, what if? No, that's not. You know, I'm gonna worry about this once I have more parts, because I'm very confused. <laughs> okay, let's close the trunk. My goodness, look at this place. Whew, I made it back in time to catch the competition. If we had been informed correctly, Mr. Anderson is judging the entries. So he should be around here, right? Hm. Indeed, I wonder which of the gentlemen walking around here is our man. Well, hopefully everybody had a good day. I know Arcee was here for a bit, but her and Zunder apparently have finally gotten on, like, a regular sleep schedule. So I believe they're both asleep now. Since it's, like, 11... Almost midnight for them. Or maybe midnight? I'm always so bad at time zones. Uh-oh, it looks like two men over there are getting pretty hot under the collar about something. Yeah, I know, they're trying to be normal people, like good girls and boys. I wonder what the matter is.
Just any, just look at that mangy hide. Anyone with two eyes can see that's no bovine of mine. I know what's going on here. Someone swapped my prize cow for this low-class heifer. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Can you just point out which cow is yours? How do you expect me to do that? Oh, dear, this is gonna get ugly. How do you not know what your cow is? Like, they have markings and stuff on them. <sighs> What's wrong, mister? Mm, this fella here seems convinced someone swapped his prize cow for another cow. Now, I'm telling you, that ain't no cow of mine. My girl was perfect from horns to tail. See what I mean? There's just no convincing him. Mm, we can't start the contest with him carrying on, but I don't know how we can clear the situation up. I'll take care of this. The cows are sure to know if any monkey business has gone on. Of course. Why didn't I think of that myself? I'll leave this one to you, Luke. It's not weird that you know how to um, gauge cows' emotions and things. <laughs> hmm. Excuse me, ladies. Can you help us out here? Moo, moo. I see. Moo, moo, moo. Uh, did you find out anything of use? I certainly did. If I had to sum up our conversation, it'd go something like this. He just starts, like, mooing at me. Misinformation. <laughs> Do you guys like that? Isn't that, that... Oh, God, that cow there. I forgot. Five cows are grazing at the festival. Two of them are true moo cows, a breed that only tells the truth. The others are three no-way cows, a different variety that always lies. Use the following statements from each cow to work out which cows are liars. Touch a letter to mark it with an X. Okay, yeah, D is a no-way. Oh no, C isn't a true moo. A ain't no no-way cow. No way. E's a no-way if I've ever seen one. B's definitely not a true moo. It isn't true moo like actually like some kind of like milk or chocolate milk brand? Dang, copyright infringement, Layton. Okay, oh gosh, logic. Um, let's see, if we said D's in no way, but there's only, there's only three liars. Oh no, C isn't a true moo. Which would make B tell the truth. A ain't no no way, no way. Which means that there would be a no way. E is a no way if I've ever seen one. Oh wait, we didn't say if... Let's see, cause if they were lying and they were lying and D said E's a no way, then they'd be lying and B is definitely not a true moo. Which may also make them a liar. Which means everything's wrong. But if if they're lying and they say C isn't a true moo, then C is a true moo. And then you're a true moo. He's definitely not a true moo. Then that would make E a uh, son of a Okay. I hate how they're all talking about different cows. Yeah, two are true, three are not. So three of them are lying. So let's assume, well, let's say A was lying. If D is a no way, I promise that would mean that they're a liar, but D isn't. And then if D said E's a no way, then that would make that. And then A ain't a no way cow, no way, then that would make you a liar. C isn't a true moo, which would be the truth. E's in no way, yeah. And then B's definitely not a true moo, which would make them a liar. Bam! Got it! Here it goes. I hope. Yes! <laughs> I was like, I, yeah! Yeah, I'm, I'm smart once I stop complaining and I do it. That's right, cows A, C, and E are no ways. If you assume each cow to be a no way or true moo and run through each of the cow statements, you'll eventually realize that the only time there can be three no ways is if they are A, C, and E. Hmm. 
it looks like these two ladies swap places while waiting for the competition to start, and I don't understand how you couldn't tell because all of those cows look completely different. Things should be all sorted out now, though. Oh, you betcha! Look at that build, that lustrous sheen, that soulful gaze. That's my cow, no doubt. And so everything's okay, then? Better than okay, kid. With my darling back, I'm a shoo in for that blue ribbon. Thanks. Well, Luke, you certainly have a way with animals. No, it's nothing, really. <laughs> Look over here, you two. They're about to announce the winner. And the winner of this year's Dropstone Dairy Crown is... That guy. Oscar show-stopping bovine beauty, Moo Tilda. Yeah, real Dr. Doolittle. Hold on! Do you mean to tell me my sweet behemoth didn't make first place? Shouldn't have swapped your cow back, Clabber. If you kept quiet, you'd be the winner, eh? I was robbed! Robbed! The competition must be rigged! Rigged, I tell you! Man, cow people are crazy. To think he went through all that trouble to get his cow back and ended up losing because of it. Yes, I suppose it goes to show that things don't always go as planned in life. Right you are, Professor. Say, shouldn't Mr. Anderson be around here now? It's gonna take some effort to find him in a crowd this dense. Let's look around a bit. Okay, well... How about you? Do you know what he looks like, Hat Man? You ever hear the old saying, the clothes make it the man? Well, from the look of your duds, I'd say you got your act together, so try this puzzle on for size. Thanks, Lopez. Change of clothes. Oh, this. A, B, and C each started off with shirts and trousers of the same color. A wore red, B wore blue, and C wore right, white. They were then blindfolded and swapped items of clothing. I'm like, who took their clothes off with their blindfold? Did them or someone else? Because this is this is getting a little weird. After they took off their blindfold, uh, yeah, they took their blindfolds off. Here, what they said. No one's shirts and trousers match. It looked like C's the only one of us who didn't keep any of his original clothes. I don't know if I like these red trousers. Yeah, so, bonk. And they didn't keep any of their original clothes. So he has to have a blue bottom, and he has to have a red top. That's not red. That's red. Bump it a bump. Submit. Do the trick. No. Hooray for Wonderful. pictures. Wonderful. Nicely done. You know that C is the only one not wearing something from his original outfit, meaning he's not wearing anything white. You also know he has red trousers, so his shirt must be blue. Since A and B are each wearing one item of their own, you can deduce that A is dressed in a red shirt and B in blue trousers. With all that settled, all you have to do is place your remaining white items in the right places, and the puzzle is solved. Still kind of weird, but okay. I mean, we also like to deep fry everything. Shirts and trousers that don't match are the epitome of tacky. That's fashion rule number one. Oop, well, I hope they don't look at me then. Rule number two, no one can pull off sequins. But with that swish suit of yours, you're golden. No swanky nightclub will turn you away, I guarantee it. Cool, thanks, Lopez, I guess. I just want to find Mr. Anderson. Can you tell me about Mr. Anderson? Yeah, I'm just about the slickest dresser in all of Dropstone. See this hat? No one else can pull off a look this edgy. Yen, yeah, I'm gonna go. We never did manage to meet Mr. Anderson, did we? Yes, what a pity. I had a feeling he'd provide us with the lead of the Elysian box. Hey there, fellows. I haven't seen you around these parts before. I heard you chatting about Mr. Anderson, and I thought to myself, hey, I can help. Here, I'll point him out. No, it's a puzzle. Ah, I forgot. There's so many puzzles. Who's Mr. Anderson? I just saw Mr. Anderson around here a minute ago. He shouldn't be too hard to spot with that beard and hat. <laughs> yep, he's a real gentleman. He always looks so smart with his cane and that dapper little bow tie. Oh, and he doesn't wear glasses in case you're wondering. Look, there he is now. Okay. Welcome back, Otter. 
Okay, so it's not you because you don't have a cane. Um, you're wearing glasses. You are a woman, so you cannot be Mr. Anderson. You also don't have a cane. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, that man. That's a child. So these are the only two men it can be. A cane and a hat. <gasps> oh, but this man doesn't have a bow tie. So Mr. Anderson must be this one. Did you know that you're back? Well, probably. Yeah, solved. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Good eye. It looks like the wind tried to carry off Mr. Anderson's hat. Ho <laughs> that was the tricky part. He wasn't wearing a hat. But he was. It's a telefriend. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, you know what? I should have picked that up, but I was too busy trying to find this tiny blue bearded man. Or maybe black beard. Bearded. Good day, sir. I'm searching for one Mr. Anderson. Might you be him? I'm the one and only, my friend, and with whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? <laughs> the name is Herschel Layton. My friends and I have come to this fine place in search of the Elysian box. I thought a man of your influence, uh... A, a man of influence such as yourself might be able to offer us some direction. Mm, the Elysian box, you say? Why would you want to go chasing after a thing like that? I take it you're familiar with it? Familiar? Uh, no, I've never... I, I've heard rumors, of course, and I know it's referred to as Pandora's box. I also believe my dear mother once searched for the very box of which you speak. Interesting. Please elaborate. Ah, well, my birth mother died when I was very young. The mother I speak of is actually my mother-in-law, Sophia. She founded this village way back when. Kindest soul I've ever met. Sharp, too. I married into her family, but she treated me like her own flesh and blood. Since I never knew my own mother, I suppose it would be fair to call Sophia my real mother. Even after my wife passed away, Sophia continued to treat me as one of her own. Sophia looked high and low for that box, but she never could find what she was looking for. So she made efforts of her own to search for it. Fascinating. Tell me, where might Sophia be now? She, mm, she left us last year. In her last day, she spent a lot of time holed up in her room, writing. Sadly, I never found out why she was so intent on getting her hands on that box. I see. I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you. Well, my mother may have known something about the subject, but she's gone now. Now you know as much as I do. I regret that I couldn't be more help to you, sir. <laughs> Not at all, Mr. Anderson. I've learned a great deal from our conversation. You have my thanks. Oh, one thing before you go, Mr. Layton. Please take a look around you. Mm, these picturesque hills, these happy people. Dropstone has been blessed with so much. Sophia built this place from scratch into a village full of warmth and camaraderie. Dropstone must never be allowed to wither and die like so many other villages. After all, this place owes its current prosperity to the many sacrifices she made. Now, oh, forgive my ramblings. Once I start topic talking, I sometimes have trouble stopping. Enjoy your time in Dropstone and be well. Good day. It's just like Pringles. Once you pop, just can't stop. Hmm, it looks like that was another dead end. No, oh, I wouldn't say that, Luke. It would appear this village is inextricably linked to the Elysian box. I also find Mr. Anderson's choice of words interesting. I wonder what he meant by sacrifices. Well, that is something for us to ponder later. For now, let us make our way to the station. All right, Professor. The Professor, Luke, and Flora decide to head back to the train station. Yeah, Flora, who's totally there, even though she hasn't said a word. Mr. Anderson is a pillar of the community. He's made this village a place I'm glad to call home. Okay, well, let's get the break out of here for now. Oh, hello again. 
Oh dear, oh dear, the train's scheduled to depart any minute now and she's still not here. Everyone's efforts will have been in vain if she misses her train out of town. Oh my, oh my. Maybe women just need more time to get ready for things like this. Oh, why must she make me worry? You've unlocked the secret, Jacques. Excuse me, but are you waiting for someone? It's none of your business. We haven't even told the master about what we're doing. Luke, perhaps it's best to leave him be. Sometimes it's best not to barge into the affairs of others. Yeah, this guy is like just fucking crazy. Calm down. Well, if he doesn't want us to talk to him, maybe he shouldn't be thinking out loud. Who's the glasses, dude? Oh, he's just some nerd. Who knows everything about the town, apparently. For some reason, all the old-timers here are very cagey about the origins of Dropstone. Oh yeah, I said this already. Basically, like, if you talk about the origins, people are like, we don't talk about that. Because you ask him about an, uh, about the Elysian box, and he's like, oh, sorry, I know a lot, but I don't know that. He looked like a guy in charge of the last town. Maybe. The he he does look a lot like him, huh? <laughs> now that I think about it, just maybe his head's a little flatter. This place is positively crawling with people, isn't it? Careful, Floor. If you don't watch where you're going, you're likely to run into someone. Oops, sorry. This is all so new to me that I forget to pay attention to where I'm going. Understandable. After all, it's quite different to what you're used to. Well, Floor, you certainly seem to be excited. Just don't stand around gawking for too long and we might accidentally leave you behind. Five seconds later. Wow, what's that? Oh, look, there's another one over there. Huh? P -p Professor? Luke? Where did you two go? Ah! Eek! Since the prices are steadily rising in nostalgia, you picked up Fire Emblem Echoes? I still haven't played Echoes. Or Fates. I only- I, I- Awakening was like the last one, and then after that I felt like they started to get like super duper like... weeby. But, I don't know. Oh no! Professor Floor has gone! Oh dear, it must have become separated in the crowd back there. Let's retrace our steps. It's gonna be awfully hard to find her with all these people about. Now where could that girl have gone off to? Whew! Flora, where did you run off to? Yeah, no, that's the... I mean, honestly, Otter, the reason why I've been playing, like, the Phoenix Wright games, um, like, emulated... I mean, part of it is because, obviously, I don't have a 3DS or something that I can stream from, but also because the prices on those games are fucking stupid. <laughs> And it's not even, the, the thing is people are like, oh man, you're not buying this game, you're not, it's like, no, the company's not even getting any of this money. It's some rando who wants like $150 for a cart of dual destinies, and I'm like, sorry, no, not doing that. <laughs> what did you run off to? Sorry, there were so many people that I must have lost you. I turned to look at something and before I knew it, you two were gone. Well, I'm relieved that you found your way back to us. With so many people around, who knows how long it could have taken us to find you. I'll be more careful from now on, I promise. Although, you know, I heard a few interesting things while I was wandering around over there. You gotta put- yeah, ex that's the thing that sucks. So many of them are like rarities now. Oh, what did you hear? That a man named Romy was asking around after the Elysian box. If we can track him down, maybe he can tell us something we don't know. I heard from one person that he's been wandering around near the station. That is interesting news. Let's head to the station and see if we can find this Romy. Good on you, Flora. That's some top-notch intelligence you gathered out there. <laughs> oh, it was nothing. The Professor Luke and Flora decide to look for a man named Romy. Oh, it's time to talk to this mm, fine piece of nose. 
this whole festival's been put on the, by the Andersons, the wealthiest family in the village. As you're new here, let me fill you in on that family. The Andersons live in the mansion at the north end of town. Makes you turn green with envy. Eh, not really. Anyway, Mr. Anderson has a young daughter who's grown up to become quite a beautiful young lady. Or her name is Katya, and she's the most unusual combination of both beautiful and sweet. How is that unusual? You sound like a terrible person. Plus, I hear she's very respectful towards her father, unlike most youngsters. The only thing kids these days love more than talking back to their parents are those baggy jeans. Oh, I'm sorry. I do believe I've gone off on a bit of a rant. Do you need something from me? The way the font is, always looks like Fiora, like from Xenoblade, instead of Flora. Yeah, she was grabbed, but she made it back. Maybe she fought off her attacker, or maybe it was just a kindly man giving her chocolate. I don't know. We'll worry about that later. I wish a kindly man would give me chocolate, because I could go for some chocolate right now. Actually, yes. Tell me, madam, have you ever heard of a rare antique known as the Elysian Box? Hmm... That name's new to me. I can't help you at all, so will you leave me alone now? Oh, but you know, you did just remind me of a gem of a puzzle I know that concerns a box. My box! The patterned box. I mean, I just call it like a die, because it looks like a die, but... The two boxes shown below are actually the same box shown from two different angles. Using the visible faces as a guide, reassemble the pattern of the box by placing the tiles into the unfolded view of the box. Don't forget, each tile needs to go on in the correct place and facing the correct direction, so you may need to rotate the tiles with your stylus. Okay, so... First things first. Um... That go there. Because... We look at that from there, and... Wait... That's... No, 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 that's right. No. Sorry. Like that. Yes. Because when we fold it, and then that goes in... Okay. Um, underneath... This bad boy. Which is going to point that way when it's folded, like... Never mind. Ah! Uh, God! Never... Brain! Brain. It's okay. We can do this. That's gonna be the bottom. That's actually going to need to go that way. Because it'll... Yeah, like that. The... And, and... <laughs> Don't worry. This is going to be okay. And then that... Needs to be there. That goes like that. And then... Next to that... Is this. And then, oh yeah, they, they put the circle on the bottom because you, you're not going to be able to tell the orientation of that from, like, anything. Wait, but then that would be... Oh, crap. Oh, duh. Funk. Aha! Yes? No. <laughs> My brain! Okay, the circle definitely goes on top, though. Um, if that's facing up, oh. that's definitely got to be like that. I think it would have to be like that. No, because that would face that. In which case... have to be that one then Yeah, so yeah, fuck you. The yellow circle goes up directly above the spade. Okay, so that does go there. Okay. 
Yeah, it, this makes my brain, I'm like, fucking Jesus Christ, just... Okay, so I think everything's in the right position, except for... The, s the club. Well, if you turn that, then that'll be on its side. Turn that. <laughs> oh god I'm just like trying to imagine folding this in my head like I have like a fucking foldable piece of paper nearby or something to do this well cause then that'll be facing the same wait no 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 and car yeah it's just my brain Wait, that? I think this is it. Submit! I'm if it's not, not it... To test my theory. Yeah, I did it! <laughs> Brain pain A worth. Gentlemen leaves no puzzle unsolved. Oh, jeez. Good job. Was it hard converting the 3D shape of the box? Yeah, it was, you dumb bastard. It hurts my head. This is the spinning. Well, hang me on the washing line and call me a bath mat. I never thought you'd solve that one. Is she... I don't... Sorry, ma'am. I'm not interested in that kind of activity right now. I'm just interested in puzzles. You seem like a nice man, so I'll be straight with you. I wouldn't talk about that box in these parts. But why? Well, it's complicated. Now I've given you my advice, so smarten up and follow it. I still don't like the hang me on <laughs> the drying rack and call me a bath mat. Sounds like some BDSM stuff going on there. Oh, Mr. Layton, do you have a moment? Uh, certainly. How may I be of assistance? It seems you've done a great deal of investigating today. Tell me, during the course of your inquiries, you didn't hear anything about my daughter, did you? Your daughter, sir? Yes, Katya. You see, she hardly ever comes home since her grandmother Sophia passed away. Sophia and my daughter were very close, so her death came as a great shock to Katya. If you should see her, would you please tell her that her father wishes she'd come home? If a fine gentleman such as yourself delivers the message, she just might listen. Unfortunately, our train is leaving soon, my, so I may not be able to be much help at all. Katya is my, no, our only child. She means everything to me and I'd be forever in your debt if you could help me. I wonder what kind of person Katya is. Your guess is as good as mine, but judging from her family and upbringing, I'd imagine she's both beautiful and refined. Steady on, Professor. Romy! I heard you've been inquiring around the village about an antique known as the Elysian Box. Oh yeah, that thing. People say it kills whoever manages to prize open its lid. Pandora's Box, they call it. And I just found out about it during the course of my travels. But that box isn't what I'm really after. Well then, if I may be so bold as to ask, what are you looking for, sir? A phantom town that's nowhere to be found on any map! In a place that only the Chosen may visit. The only way in, I hear, is on the Molentary Express. That train and its many mysteries have been the subject of my research for years. From what I can tell, this artifact you're after, this Elysian box, is also tied to that town. Wow! So when can we set out for it? How do we get there? Yeah, that's the one detail I haven't managed to pin down yet. Maybe you whisper a password, then you're on the train and whoosh! The track goes in a new direction. Anyway, it's probably something like that. I'll just have to keep searching until I find a way in. Interesting. Thank you for your time. Professor, did you hear that? I think we finally got a new lead on the Elysian box. Hm. It's a bit early to celebrate, but it looks like our journey on the Molentary Express isn't over yet. All right, you two. Let's start making our way back to the station. Okay, Professor. 
Bye, Granny Riddleton. Hey there, Sammy. Yeah, you got at least 30 puzzles under your belt. Who's the rock star now? It's me. I'm the rock star. It's me. We're the rock stars. How's that festival treating you, dudes? Pretty righteous, huh? This train isn't ready to move quite yet, so while you're waiting, I'll lay this sweet puzzle on you. Oh, Sammy's necklace. Oh, I don't want Sammy's necklace laid on me. Sammy has eight chains with seven links each. He wants to connect all these chains to make a necklace. The jeweler says that it will cost two euros each time he opens and closes a single link. I like how I have to mess with that because I played the um, American version, so it just says like $2. As shown below, Sammy could open one end of each of the eight chains and make, the make one long necklace. However, that would cost 16 euros, and the truth is that there's a cheaper way to get the same result. Using the cheapest method possible, how much will it cost to make the necklace? Um... Crap. Okay, so he wants to make it for less than that. Yeah, so it's like the easiest way would just be to open and close them once each, which would be eight total, but... <sighs> oh, Jesus. I've never played Ghost Trick. I heard it's another interesting one, though. Let's see, um... Oh, really? Nice! Okay, we're gonna unlock a hint. The number of links in each small chain is a crucial clue- Oh, yeah! Wait, okay. Okay, that's the thing, cause, uh, one, two, three, four. I remember now. Okay, so basically, um, hmm. See. Yeah, cause that'll cost $2 to open and close a single link. So instead of opening and closing each end, of these ones, you take one of these, which is seven links each. So the cheapest he can do it in is $14, because he opens and closes seven instead of eight, he but he gets the same result. <laughs> it's so stupid! A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Uh, score! Take one of Sammy's seven link chains, break each link apart, and use them to connect the remaining small chains together, as shown in the illustration. If Sammy uses this method, he can get the necklace of his dreams for only 14 euros. God, he's such a cheapskate. Sammy's necklace is now solved. The Molentary Express is back in business, baby. Get ready to ride, folks. Yeah, you guys better hurry back to your seats because this train is ready to rock. Whoa, that's so many. Whoops. Well. Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> Thank you so much. Hmm? Lane's just like, mm <laughs> stare. Huh? Uh, uh, awkward! Sir, uh, Leighton, I don't think that's very gentlemanly. I believe we may have stumbled upon Mr. Anderson's dear daughter. That's a cracking send-off she's having. Considering the size of the party, I doubt she's just going on holiday. Yeah. <laughs> 
New mystery. Katia is the only daughter of Dropstone's most influential man, Mr. Anderson, and has been and has boarded the Molentary Express. Several villagers came to see her off, yet she travels alone. Where is Katia headed, and why is she making the journey there by herself? I don't know, I guess we'll find out. Save your progress. Holy moly! Five hours ex on the button! Whew! A diverging path. Alright, and this I think is where we're gonna finish up for the day, actually.